Welcome to Talking Tuesday. I am your host, Fancy Quant, and today we are going to talk about money. So I get a ton of people that email me. It's surprisingly more than you would think that say, Dimitri, I love money. As if like this means they're ready for quantitative finance and banking. And like, if you love money, um, somehow you're prepared for this. So let me talk to you about why you don't love money and why this is a massive red flag. However, I... I try to scale back a little bit and be understanding with you, but money is nothing more than typically a piece of paper or a piece of metal. So I have a one US dollar here. It is nothing more than a piece of paper. So it's like saying, I love paper. Doesn't make any sense on why you love paper. Now, I understand why students say this. They're trying to say that I really want to get into the industry. I will do almost anything to get into the industry and I really want to make money for someone because they think somehow there's joy in just making money. Um, let's rewind here a little bit on how you could actually love money in a different stance that's more appropriate. However, the way that these are typically stated is not. It's like, I think I would be great to work at this firm because I love money. Um, so let's take a rewind here a little bit. So I actually love money in the sense of money in banking. Now, what does that mean? So when I was in, I think it was undergrad, I took a class called uh, Money in Banking. Now, this is the history of money. So money is not a piece of paper. It is not a, a coin. It is not something like that. It is a way that we transfer value. And so typically when I find these students that say, I love money, they've typically have not even taken economics courses. And if you really think the transactional processes, the how banking works, like the ideas behind this, you really love the banking system. You like the way that value is transferred. You typically find capitalism very um, beneficial and interesting and intricate, which I know many people don't. But you start to look at how you transfer value, how value is generated, it's more or less like a scientific study of how people, you know, create value, which is how you survive on that. So in a stance, you know, learning the history of money, learning how value creation occurs. Um, again, the more appropriate statement is I love economics. I think it's very fascinating uh, on how economies are put together because uh, the, the money piece of it is just a small fraction of how we transfer value and how we store value. Uh, even in the modern era here now with digital currency, we'll call it, right? That's not even money anymore. It's just, there's an account with a, a little dollar counter. Like when you log into your, I don't know, your app at your bank and it says you have X amount of dollars. It's not that you love the digital, you know, printed value on a sheet of paper, it's more or less you love what that money can actually do for you. And I think this is the second piece. So the first piece being many people love economics and finance and understanding the systems and the processes and the business itself. And I think it's, there's different aspects to finance and banking. Some people love um, the financial theory, which is like, how do you generate more wealth? Uh, how do you help individuals out? It's more of like a, how do I help people? And then there's other people like me who like, I just love the numbers and the math and putting the systems together uh, and modeling out consumer behavior and understanding the intricate details behind that, which is an educational piece here. So that's loving more or less the theory and academic pieces of that. The other piece is going to be, you love what money can do for you. Right, there is a group of people that actually do love money. Uh, they're very shallow people that don't really comprehend much outside of the space of just like greed. It's like pure greed. Like they need money for the sake of money, right? They need to tell people they have lots of money. Uh, it's a very toxic piece here. And I think this is, we try to differentiate when students message me, right? I, I understand most of you don't really love money when you say that. So I try to read between the lines here for you guys. But there are people that do reach out to me that say, I love money. And they really do love money in the sense they're just greedy little people who don't understand anything. They don't, they don't care about the math. They don't care about the theory. They just want to make money. And these are honestly pretty shallow people. They don't have much thought process. So for quantitative finance, it requires deep intellectual thought. If you can't put the ideas together and you know communicate them, that is a massive red flag that you will not begin the quant finance industry. Uh, but the main reason I think most people love money is because money can do things for you, right? So when people typically say, Dimitri, I love money, my next question is, okay, what do you want to do with that money? 
If you don't know what you're going to do with that money, you're, you're in the greedy camp here. You're not really understanding, right? People want money so they can do things. Like I have a buddy of mine and I'm like, all right, he's like, oh, I just need an extra, you know, 2000 bucks or whatever. And I'm like, what do you need 2000 bucks for? He's like, oh, there's this motorcycle I really want. And like, you know, I really want to go out and ride and take my kids with me. And he's going through this whole thing about, you know, family trips and riding his bikes around and exploring the, the wilderness and, you know, the outdoors and the enjoyment here. He wants money because one, he likes motorcycles, but two, it's because he wants to spend time with his family. He's getting something from this. It's not that he actually wants the dollar or the check or the numbers on your bank account. He's just going to hold on to these and go, yes, 2000 extra dollars. Uh, he wants to do something with that. So Thinking about that, I think is a more important aspect. Like, what do you want money for? Now, when I was younger, working towards quant finance and talking about optimizations, and I was slightly shallow, as many finance majors are, um, it was really the reason I wanted more money. The reason I wanted the ability to make more money is more or less freedom, like just pure freedom. If you have money and money's not a constraint, or at least not <clears throat> as much as a constraint as it could be, um, you have the freedom to do things. Like I like having financial freedom in the sense of you more or less like you don't have to work. So people like to retire, which just seems to be this big goal of everyone when you get older. Um, you want to save up enough money over your lifetime so that at the very end of it, uh, you can retire, right? That's the goal. So you don't have to work. You can enjoy your time. You can enjoy your family. You can enjoy your hobbies here. Um, the other piece is stress reduction. So one of the reasons I've always wanted to have a fairly stable career and enough money to survive here is the sense of I don't want to be going paycheck to paycheck. So I lived a life at one point where I was going paycheck to paycheck and I was, you know, struggling to pay student loans and you know, student bills and paying for textbooks and you know, there's a lot of these expenses like food <laughs> and auto insurance and gas and things that aren't fun. Like you just have to buy a lot of things because you have to buy them, right? You're just in survival mode here. And so having money provides you that financial freedom, which is a type of freedom where you're not worrying about paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, or you're not worrying about, you know, some sort of medical bill that pops up or your car breaks down. And it's like, now you're just stressed out. You don't have the funds. You can't get your car fixed. You need your car to get to school or to work or, you know, get your family around, whatnot. But I think it's important to think about that from another perspective of what do you want money to do with it? Especially when you start to look at people that are extremely wealthy, you start thinking about uh, like Elon Musk, you think about Bill Gates or I don't know, Bezos or any of these people, like what are they doing with their money, right? People always think, oh, well, you know, I like so-and-so and they're very wealthy and they're doing all these great charitable funds. Often it's because people have a lot of extra money and they want to do something with it. Like they want to give back to their universities or their schools, or they want to help, I don't know. Like even when you go to like the store, you buy Girl Scout cookies, right? You might buy them because they're really good, but you also might be buying, you know, things like that, like chocolate bars from the Boy Scouts or whatnot. I used to sell those when I was a kid, but you're helping to support those kids to go to camp for the summer, or you're helping, you know, I don't know, some sort of charitable cause, or you're building something better. So like building your own business. A lot of people save up a bunch of money, they get some expertise, they wanna start their own business. Now there's a little bit of freedom. Again, money gives you freedom. That's part of the capitalist structure and system here. Now, don't forget, you have to have capitalism to have money to set you free, to provide you freedoms. Uh, if you work in socialism, right, everybody gets the same thing, you get stripped back. So it doesn't benefit you to work any extra above and beyond, right? You're not getting any extra freedoms. Uh, same for communism, right? The government owns everything. Often you're borrowing things from the government. Uh, money does not give you the freedom here. So money as a means to freedom, whether it's financial freedom, whether it's time freedom, whether it's you know more time to buy things that provide you happiness, like time with your family and vacations and all that, that is a pure capitalistic idea. And I don't think many people realize that you cannot have, like it doesn't benefit you to have extra money uh, in other systems unless you have social class to go with that. So next time you start to think about, you know, I love money, stop yourself and think more deeply on why do you love money? If you have extra money, what is that going to do for you? 
right? So when you start to think about savings and retirement and all that, often people want more money to put into an investment or into a high yield savings account or to buy real estate because they're trying to generate more money. It's not that they want more money for the sake of wanting more money. It's because they often want to have something at the end goal here, some sort of retirement, some sort of nest egg, uh, something to pass on to their, their children and their families. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.